Oh, looks like we have ourselves a mascot. Life with cats. <laughs> Buddy, that's not your basil. Don't be rude. The sign's out, which means it's probably gonna go, ow, oh, God. It's gonna go, ow, oh, God. Buddy, Min you guys, this video's never gonna get made because my cats are gonna kill me. Let's see if I can do this super fast. Is this what it's like to have kids? And now some vague history with Danielle. When coffee first came to Europe in the 1500s, it was traveling from the southern tip of Africa. And since that's not just a hop, skip, and a jump away, between the time that it took and the salty sea air, it changed the coffee drastically. But the people in Europe didn't seem to mind because they were like, oh no, we love old coffee. No, don't give us the new coffee. That stuff's gross. But then of course, like all fads, they changed their minds and they were like, no, wait, what were we thinking? We don't like old coffee. We want the fresh new coffee. So that all also was kind of like the same situation in America and then instead of the old stale-ish coffee they favored more of the fresher coffees. Now when it comes to the aging process that doesn't involve an old dusty ship and traveling for months and months and months at sea, there are in fact people who do know how to properly age coffee. I don't know who they are, but I know that they're out there. And again, like most fads, because everything's cyclical, aged coffee is starting to come back into trend. I think in like Taiwan, Europe, here, and I'm sure other places. But if you are to buy aged coffee or you want to try it, make sure the company's coffee that you're buying actually knows how to do it and doesn't just put old stale beans in a bag and then slaps a label on there and calls it specialty coffee. So that brings me to this guy. George Howell, um, he's well known in the coffee community and what actually prompted me to even make this video was I saw this and I saw that it was harvested December 2015. I was like, that's really old. I thought you're supposed to drink coffee when it's like fresh and not, you know, three years old. So I was curious. So I'm going to try three-year-old coffee. <laughs> so the way that I'm going to be making it is through a French press. So that way I can get all of the dusty oldness out of it as I can. This is probably not the most efficient way of doing this because if I were to spill this water on my legs, I would make some very high-pitched pterodactyl sounds that nobody wants to hear. Or if you close your eyes, it sounds like someone's peeing. <sighs> now I'm going to put the plunger in. And then let this puppy sit for uh, for four minutes. It's time. I know you're wondering what was Danielle doing with those four minutes of her life. She was making peanut butter and jelly toast, so I didn't really eat them as a kid, and now I'm eating them like every day because it's delicious. So this is one of my favorite parts: is taking the plunge. Three-year-old coffee, guys. This is one of my favorite glasses that I got from Sir Latab. Okay, now the notes that were in here were apple, cherry, and sweet caramel. Clink! That's actually really good. It doesn't taste old. It doesn't taste moldy. It literally tastes like really, really great quality coffee, which is nothing less than I would have expected from George Howell. It's also a lighter roast, which has more caffeine, so really it's a win-win. <laughs> but there it is, three-year-old coffee, if aged properly, tastes delicious. So everyone go out there and buy really, really old coffee and then tell me about it so we can talk. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video with me. I hope you guys learned anything from this, and I will see you guys next week. Bye! Buddy, this is not where kitties go.